What are the best things to do in Miami if you're thinking of visiting this warm and sunny city? I'm glad you asked. I just got back from a long weekend getaway to Miami and in this video, I'm sharing what to do, where to stay, and some travel tips to help you plan a relaxing, fun, and inspiring trip that's worth your time. So let's get started. First and foremost, you must visit a beach in Miami. You might think Miami Beach is just a one giant beach, but it's actually a city and an island with a miles of gorgeous coastline and a bunch of amazing beaches scattered across it. The crown jewel of them all is South Beach. We were here during the third week of February. The water looked so inviting that at least we had to dip our toes in the water. It's still lovely to be here. After catching some rays on the beach, our stomachs started rumbling. So we knew it was a time to head over to Ocean Drive. This iconic strip is lined with restaurants and bars, and you know what that means. <laughs> you can come to Miami and not treat yourself with a glass of mojito or a margarita. And don't worry, if you're skipping the alcohol, many spots offer delicious mocktails too. This is a mocktail. It's zero alcohol, but it's a margarita with jalapeno. I never had a jalapeno margarita, so... It definitely has a kick to it, but it's delicious. If you want my recommendations for the restaurants here, Old Mexico has really good tacos, chips and salsa, made with fresh ingredients and great flavors. I definitely recommend ordering the salsa bar with five different options. It tastes like the most flavorful, I can have the most of this one. Yeah. And it's like toasty and um, just yeah. delicious, yeah. And listen up, here's a heads up about Ocean Drive in general. Most restaurants add a 20-person service fee to the bill. The cool thing about Old Mexico though, was our server mentioned it upfront, so there were no surprises. So we are on our way to breakfast. We're going to Cafe Americano. Now, the second restaurant comes with a caveat. They didn't have any smoothies today, so I ordered this. This was nine bucks. Allegedly freshly squeezed. Let me see if it is. It's like kind of mixed with fresh squeeze and orange juice. No milk? Yes, for a meal. Charge is me, but where is the service? So the cafe might be a touch on the pricey side, and the service wasn't the fastest. But if you're looking for a classic American breakfast to fuel your Miami adventures, this spot gets the job done. Plus, you can't beat people watching and soaking in that ocean breeze with a view of palm trees on Ocean Drive. Next up, dive into Miami's unique style with an Art Deco district walking tour. A great budget-friendly option is the downloadable self-guided audio tour for just $15. This lets you explore the neighborhood's historic buildings at your own pace, making for a truly flexible experience. These hotels are small. These were like meant for middle-class tourists. So not, it's not the high-end luxury hotels, which are just small and more affordable. Unlike some fancy architecture that uses tons of gold and granite, Art Deco embraced new and human-made materials such as chrome and concrete. And they were perfect for creating these bold geometric shapes and streamlined looks. The result? Iconic buildings that stand out even today. Talk about standing the test of time. Now, if you're visiting Miami just for one day, hitting South Beach, Ocean Drive, and Art Deco district will keep you busy. But for longer stays, finding the right place to stay is key. Good morning from Miami, Florida. On this trip, I actually tried two different neighborhoods. First off, the Art Deco district in South Beach. Here, during the shoulder season, you can find cool boutique hotels for around $200 a night, putting you right next to the action on Ocean Drive and South Beach. For this stay, I tried Sonder, a trendy newcomer in the hospitality scene. Now, Sonder is kind of like a mix between a boutique hotel and Airbnb. 
you get the convenience of app-based check-in and communication. So I just checked out online. You don't have to see a um, staff. You don't have to go to the front desk. So that's awesome. Oh, another thing is that they don't charge you a deposit like most other hotels. So that's another bonus of staying here. But unlike Airbnb, which is a marketplace, Sonder owns and manages all of their properties. So you get a consistent quality of experience, plus the added perk of having a cafe or a bar in the lobby. The egg dish was $15 and my yogurt was nine, which is yeah. what you expect. So, and the food was good. Yes. Uh, was it convenient? And I'd rather have something like this, like convenient, like a cafe, rather yeah. than like a swanky bar and restaurant, you know? Because sometimes all you need is just like a quick pickup. What I like about this place so far is that there are several buildings next to each other and the entire, the area, whole area is um, Sonder. So you have like a lot of outdoor space like this to hang out because usually if you stay in a hotel it's just a lobby and there's not many like outdoor spaces unfortunately the pool wasn't heated but it didn't stop me from hanging out by the pool area the vibe was super zen perfect for relaxing after a day of exploring it was a real urban oasis overall Sonder offered a relaxed and convenient stay but it's important to note that unlike traditional hotels, Sonder doesn't offer complimentary daily housekeeping. For some, this might be a minor inconvenience. On my visit, I ran into a small issue with the coffee machine in the room. It's not working properly. And I think I can contact them and ask for help uh, over the message, but mm, it's kind of too late. We yeah. found out yesterday and we're kind of like, yeah. <laughs> this is gross. So this has a huge mirror, you know, that has this anti-fog function, which is great. But this bathroom did not have a vent. So it just has a light, but no vent. There's no window, nothing. So, you know, it's kind of stuffy here. That's my review of Sonder. If you're interested in staying at Sonder in Miami or in any locations around the world, click the link in the description below or right here. Oh, another tip um, if you want to stay in a Sondar is that so they charge $40 per night for a car for parking. You basically, I think, park right here, right up in front of the hotel. So it's just street parking, but it's pretty like protected. But if you want to save money, just cross the street, you see the police department. So they have a public garage and they charge $20 per night. So it's a great deal and it's covered parking lot. The only thing is you can take your car out, but if you're staying in South Beach, you probably don't need a car. You can always go to the car to leave something in the car, but we cannot drive the car out. That's the only thing. Oh, actually there's a really um, useful app or website. I'll link it below where you can find like parking. It's kind of like a park wheeze. Next up, we explored Brickell, Miami's financial district and opted for an Airbnb. This studio was a great home base for exploring other areas like Wynwood, Bayside, and Little Havana, coming up soon in the video. At under $200 a night, it was a great value compared to hotels in the area. Airbnb are usually more spacious because you get an actual room or studio. Plus, it even had a cute balcony with a water view. Overall, it was a convenient location with good amenities. However, keep in mind that Airbnbs can vary, and this one wasn't quite as polished as the Sonder, but if you're still interested in seeing the list, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, let's head over to our next stop. So we are here at the Bayside Marketplace. It's 8.15 and this place is open till 10. Bayside Marketplace is a total tourist hub. But hey, we are tourists. Besides, it's super convenient for grabbing a bite, doing some shopping, and soaking up those waterfront views. And if you're thinking about adding a tour to your Miami trip, Bayside Marketplace is the place to check out all your options. We didn't do any tours this time, but it was good to check out the possibilities for future trips. Do you feel like doing any of these tours? Everglades. <laughs> Everglades. I'm scared of crocodiles. I don't know what they Oh, the helicopter tour is only $99 per person. 
That's pretty reasonable. Our next stop is Wynwood, Miami's hippest neighborhood. Think cool street art, trendy shops and restaurants, sizzling nightlife, and an industrial vibe that's bursting with creative energy. It's a magnet for the young and restless, but trust me, even us not so young folks will still love it. I don't want to compare Miami to New York, but this is Williamsburg of Miami. Very industrial, there are a lot of like uh, auto repair shops here right across the street. You see really funky, modern dessert shops and up and coming brands. Warby Parker. <laughs> yeah, Warby Parker. I didn't see Warby Parker yet, but you know, you get the point. Oh, you see Warby Parker? You're standing okay. under it, yeah. All right. Okay, Warby Parker is right behind me. So this is Williamsburg of Miami. And if you are an art enthusiast, don't miss the Wynwood Wall Museum. At first I was like, okay, is this like museum worth the money? Because you know, you see graffiti arts everywhere outside for free. But then I realized all of these arts are done by international artists. So literally artists from all over the world came here to do this. So I think it's totally worth 12 bucks. It's hand painted that none of it is printed at all. Just you can see how it was masked off and one by one by one by one. Uh, painted and peeled off, painted, peeled off, painted, peeled off. Oh, yeah. You can also try spray painting here. Like you can do it like for three minutes. So that would be something fun to do. Also notice this is, is a great park for kids. Most of the artwork outside is, is, you know, you can touch them. So it's a very interactive place, especially for children. And here's a tip. Yeah, so I guess allegedly they have like 50% off uh, for Fridays. You know, come here Friday and you'll pay half the price, which will be $6 instead of $12. Now, if you are ready for a flavor change, let's head to Little Havana. Little Havana is the heart and soul of Cuban culture in Miami. Plus, it holds the title for the largest Cuban neighborhood in the country since the Cuban Revolution of 1959. We're in 8th Street, so this is Calle Ocho. Oh, it's Street the Calle Ocho. Neighborhood. The little Havana neighborhood is the 8th Street neighborhood, yeah. Walking down Calle Ocho is like stepping into another world. Live music spills out of cafes, the aroma of cigars fills the air, and authentic Cuban food can be found on every corner. Just keep in mind, with any popular area, Little Havana can have some touristy traps. So we found this charming cafe with a great vibe, but their tiny coffee came with a hefty price tag. This was a $10 coffee, mm -hmm. and it's a special coffee, so uh, Little Havana, always double check and ask the price before you get one. Let's just say, the ambience added a psychological text. Oh, it's so good, yes, thank you. <laughs> At least the coffee tasted good. Saving the best for last? Absolutely. Our final Miami stop is the stunning Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. This is a sunroom extravaganza. The estate was built in the early 1900s by a businessman, James Deering, as a winter retreat. Because this man was ill, so he wanted an elevator, even though this is only a two-floor building. Hoping to recover from his illness, during sought solace in Miami's warm sunshine. This reminds me of Lisbon and Venice at the same time. Sadly, he only enjoyed Vizcaya for a few winters and never saw his grand vision fully realized. During passed away in 1925 on a return trip from Paris in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. What's interesting is, Jiring was a very private person, and the long secluded entryway of his estate reflects that very well. He was also never married nor had any children, which is more unusual back in those days. Somehow, I sensed a touch of tragedy here. Thankfully, Jiring's nieces ensured that his dream wouldn't fade by turning Vizcaya into a museum for all of us to enjoy. If you are looking for a dose of culture and beauty, don't miss Vizcaya. 
that's all I have for Miami. If you have other recommendations or questions, feel free to comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching.